The Niagara region of Ontario, Canada is known for a lot of things, including a little old natural wonder. But for me as a local, Niagara is so much more, and secretly, the Niagara culinary scene is making big waves. Today, Chantelle and I are driving to some of my favorite spots, some you might have heard of, and some you might not have ever stumbled upon. If you love food and wine, these are some of the unexpected culinary destinations that you have to add to any itinerary. So I know, I've been to a lot of wineries and vineyards in the Niagara region, but there's something about boutique ones that are really special. You always end up discovering new wines that you add to your collection. So with that, we're headed to Henry Pelham. This place has history that goes all the way back to the late 18th century and has thrived through six generations of the same family farm. It's on a 300 acre vineyard in what's called the Short Hills Bench. Here, old world charm meets new world winemaking. Come on, let's see what they have to offer. Henry Pelham has different types of tasting tours. The private tour takes you around the key parts of the vineyard, but most importantly, you get to see one of Canada's largest working underground barrel cellars, which is also where all the bubbles are made for their cuvee. Of course, you'll end off at the retail store to do a tasting of their wines. Cheers. Really good. This is my first Baco Noir. Mm. It's not overpowering. It's, it's got mm -hmm. a nice, deep kind of palette to it. I can already smell all the fruity notes. Definitely a favorite. It's a nice, delicate balance. This is my kind of cuvee. Now on top of amazing wines, you also get with your tasting a bag of popcorn each. This is a great way to spend the morning or afternoon with super knowledgeable and enthusiastic staff. For casual wine drinkers like us, this was fantastic and unexpected because we normally don't come to the Short Hills region. But I think we'll be back because there's so many more wines to try. That was really good, huh? Yeah, it really was, I loved it. Adjacent to Henry Pelham is the Short Hills Provincial Park. It's an ancient valley that was the precursor to present-day Niagara Falls. Since you're close by, come here to enjoy one of the many trails here. Now, this is a rather large park with a lot of different trails and starting points. If it's your first time, I recommend that you come to parking lot A, which is right off of Pelham Road. It's a large gravel lot. All you have to do is park and walk right in. I'd recommend checking out the Black Walnut Trail. The winding trail passes around between and over top the park's signature glacially sculpted landscape. You'll be plenty famished after all that hiking, so we're headed to another hidden gem in the nearby Font Hill, Ontario, which is the highest point in the Niagara region. You hungry? You betcha. Todd and I were uh, buds from high school, and uh, we always seemed to gravitate towards tasty foods and tasty beers. The, the timing is right, and we had a, a sit down and a couple of beers over it, and decided to pursue one of our passions and uh, the stars aligned and the, the, the gap in timing was there for me to take on a new career so uh, we decided to open up this tiny little brewery called Cayman Kettle. They're a small batch brewery with a ton of tasty beers to try and that's exactly what we set out to do. Cheers! So good! Here's really good. So this one here is the Blueberry Peach Sour Bomb. Oh, it's fruity, all right. So what I got here is the Candy Apple, which is a mix of actually their minivan, which is a Kolsch with an apple cider. It's really good. I've never had this kind of blend before. I love these small batch brews. With beer dialed in, we can't forget about the food. In the same location is the Righteous Monger, which serves a delicious mix of bar and hearty food to pair with that high quality beer. Mm. Oh my goodness. This is really good. A buffalo sauce. Really good, it's not too spicy. Very juicy and tender. Chicken thigh trio is one of the ones to get for sure when you come here. This is sticky toffee pudding with the drizzle glaze of stout reduced with sugar. I mean, it's truly stouty. So good. You want any? Because I can finish all this. Leave me some. <laughs> wow, that was seriously good. Definitely hit the spot. Well, we've had some time to explore the charming town of Font Hill with its shops and Peace Park. So what are you feeling for dinner? Do you know a good farm-to-table restaurant? I think I know just the place. Welcome to Root and Bone. Funny enough, this is literally 170 meters from Caving Kettle and is one of the best places to come if you're looking for that farm-to-table dining experience. 
The man behind all the creations is Chef Ray Taylor. He's a celebrity chef in my books with work that spans Michelin star restaurants, work at Fairmonts, Atlantis in the Bahamas, and still oversees two restaurants at the Niagara Casinos. Watching him and the other chefs work their magic was like watching a maestro conducting a perfect symphony where all the different pieces come together that bring the chef's motto of farm to table, table to soul, truly to life. So this is the ahi tuna tartare. Again, cheers. Cheers. There's so much texture. Oh, that rice cracker is really good too. So hickory smoked oysters, really moist and plump. Like truly, this is this is like something that you don't expect to have when you come to Niagara, right? Ooh. Oh, yours looks good too. Yours has the beef Wellington. Wow, wow, it's so tender. You have to try this. Look how colorful this dish is. It's really tasty. Wow. Did not disappoint. And of course, we had to finish off with dessert. After a good night's sleep right in Welland, Ontario, start the second day of your mini getaway to the Niagara region by starting off your day right. There's nothing like starting the morning with a Hakka Bajo at the Black Sheep Lounge. I love the funky atmosphere of this coffee spot. It's one of those places that's super cozy and filled with character. Coffees are crafted with care, and don't forget the amazing selection of single origin beans roasted, all in house. Well, with coffee in hand, there's a small island nearby that I want to check out, so let's head there next. This island in Welland is called Merritt Island Park. Yes, it's an island right in the city center. It features a serene walking trail that follows a canal and is perfect for walking and biking and has plenty of benches along the way. Huh, awesome. Next up is this beautiful waterfront restaurant overlooking the canal. It's called Terrace on the Water. It's a wine country bistro right at the base of Bridge 13. Come on, let's head in to find out what the buzz is all about. This is truly a hidden gem in Welland that features a beautiful patio, tastefully decorated and spacious interior, and of course, delicious dishes created by the talented chef Justin Upper. We're here to try a few of their lunch menu highlights. So this is maple baked brie. Love brie, you got the crostini. It's gonna be perfect to be able to spread on. And we got a wine infused pear. Okay. Mm, and it's drizzled with maple. Ooh, you put too a much. lot more cheese than me. <laughs> mm. Mm. It has that touch of Canadian. This is so good. So what we have here is salmon niçoise and we have extra crispy skin on the oh. salmon, which I think you'll like. And we have everything from like a perfected ramen egg to a uh, something called sunchoke, which is uh, deep fried. And what is this here? That looks like a beet. Yeah. And you, you'd be partially right because it's salmon belly fused for three days. And we got obviously the salad, which with the house vinaigrette. All right, so again, this is part of Terrace on the Water's lunch menu. It's porchetta, focaccia, sandwich essentially with Ontario pork. It's, it's got this pickled rapini that they make all in-house, fresh cut fries from PI, and something called chicharron. Ooh. <laughs> wow, this is really juicy. Packed with flavor and... Look how many layers there are. Oh, this is so good. So now we're gonna finish things off with a classic creme brulee. Ooh, this is a good lunch. If you're into red wines in the Niagara region, a visit to Cassaba Vineyards is a must. This is our first time here and I can't wait to try their award-winning wines. Hi, Hi, Julia. Hi, Julia. Hello. Um, so this is our wine list. We'll start with the sparkling. It's our effervescence. It's off dry, tastes like champagne, but the only difference is it's made with Chardonnay and Pinot Noir to color. Cheers. 
You're right, all the bubbles keep coming. So this is the barrel fermented Chardonnay, like drinking creme brulee with buttered popcorn, all rolled up in a ball and thrown in a glass. This one is gonna be our Cab So, almost like cherry liqueur wrapped in milk chocolate. Whoa. Right? We want to stay true to who we are, and that's big Bordeaux, heavy reds, Syrah, Cabs, Merlot, that's what we focus on. Remember, they make their wine in small batches, so they tend to sell it really quickly, so make sure you pick them up before they're gone. Well, that wraps up our exploration of this truly special part of Niagara, which includes St. Catharines, Font Hill, Welland, and Vineland. We got to experience truly unexpected culinary surprises. And the best part is that we are able to do this as an overnight in Welland, or we can do this just as a day trip. This really shows you that Niagara is more than just the falls. Thanks for watching and keep going to awesome places. Some you might've heard of and others you might not have ever have heard of. What? Wow, that really hit the spot. Definitely hit the spot. <laughs> wow, that was seriously good. Definitely hit the spot. Sorry. So I know, I've been to a lot of wine, wine wineries. Here, old... For casual drinkers like us, right? Ca